Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about Le Chatelier's principle, which is just fun to say. Le Chatelier. He's a French dude, and it turns out his principle has to do with chemical reactants and products in equilibrium. So what we're thinking about is a reaction like this one below, which is reversible. And that means that some of my reactants can go forward to products, and sometimes my products will go back to reactants. And if we have this perfect balance at equilibrium of reactants and products, so the concentration is no longer changing over time, what happens when we perturb that system? What happens when we add nitrogen or hydrogen? What happens if we change the temperature or the pressure? Le Chatelier's principle helps us understand how that changes the reaction concentrations and also how that changes the equilibrium constant. So we're going to go through a series of different changes, perturbations you might do, to your reaction at equilibrium and think about what that does to our chemical species. And that's Le Chatelier's principle. So let's look at what happens, for example, if we add nitrogen. So what happens if we're at equilibrium, our dynamic equilibrium, and we add nitrogen? Well, the nitrogen concentration is going to increase. And we were at that perfect balance where we had the perfect amount of reactants and products, and now we've increased our reactants. So what's going to happen? Well, it's going to bring up our products and drop our reactants a little bit, so they're back in that equilibrium. So nitrogen's going to increase, and some of that increased nitrogen is going to combine with hydrogen, and that's going to drop our hydrogen concentration and increase our ammonia concentration. So what happens when we add nitrogen is the concentration of nitrogen goes up, it reacts with some of the hydrogen and takes it over to ammonia, so we end up with more nitrogen, more ammonia, and a little less hydrogen. The key thing to remember here is that the reaction shifts to the opposite side of an added species. So whenever I add a species, it goes to the opposite side. All right? What happens if I add ammonia? Well, if I add ammonia, it's going to increase the concentration of ammonia, and that perfect balance of reactants and products is perturbed, disturbed. And what happens is more reactants are formed. So a reaction is going to run backwards a little bit until we get that perfect balance again. And that's going to increase the concentration of hydrogen and nitrogen. So in this case, we see actually the concentration of all three is going to be increased by putting ammonia in. Again, reaction shifts to the opposite side of an added species. This says what happens if hydrogen is added. All right. Well, if I add hydrogen, I'm going to increase hydrogen concentration. And some of that's going to react with nitrogen combined to go forward to form more products. So my nitrogen concentration will drop and my ammonia concentration will increase. So that's what happens. If reaction shifts to the opposite side of an added species. All right, well, let's actually ask a slightly different question. What if instead of adding nitrogen, we're going to remove it? What happens then? Well, now I'm taking my hydrogen concentration down. And what's actually going to happen then is because I've perturbed that equilibrium, that means ammonia is going to shift back to balance that out. And that means my ammonia concentration is going to drop. And my nitrogen concentration will actually increase. So that's sort of interesting. If I remove a species, what happens is the reaction shifts towards that same side. So the reaction shifts to the same side as a removed species. So if we remove a species, the reaction shifts back to that side. So you can sort of think it like a balloon. If I squeeze on one side, it makes the other side bigger. If I expand one side, it makes the other side smaller. We're going to stay in balance to keep this equilibrium. All right, well, what happens if instead I change the temperature? Well, that turns out to depend on if your reaction is exothermic or endothermic. This reaction turns out to be exothermic, and that means it produces heat. So we can think about heat as being another product. And what that means is, if I add heat, it really follows the same rule that I did for other species that I added. So if I increase the temperature, it's like increasing the heat, and that actually will make my ammonia drop, and my hydrogen and nitrogen increase. So it's going to shift to the opposite side, just like we saw for the species. One difference here is when I added or removed a chemical reactant or product, I didn't change the equilibrium constant. The equilibrium constant stayed the same, and the concentrations just shifted to keep that balance perfect. But when I change the temperature, that actually changes the equilibrium constant itself, and it will shift it to favor reactants for an exothermic reaction, and it will shift it to, save, to favor products for an endothermic reaction. All right, what about if my temperature decreases? Well, that similarly is like removing a species. So if my temperature decreases, that is my heat drops, well, that's actually going to favor products because this is an exothermic reaction, and that means more ammonia is going to form, and hydrogen and nitrogen are going to drop in concentration. So again, if I remove something, then that means it shifts the equilibrium towards the side where I've removed stuff. If I add something, it shifts it to the opposite side. Last change we'll look at. What happens if pressure increases? Well, high pressure favors the side with fewer 
moles of gas. So let's count up our moles of gas. On this side, we have one mole of nitrogen gas and three, that's four total moles of gas. On this side, we just have our two ammonia moles. Now we count all the moles because all of them are Gs. Those are all gases. If one of them was solid or liquid or aqueous, we wouldn't count it. So which one takes up less space here? Nitrogen and hydrogen on our reactant side or nitrogen and hydrogen on our product side? Well, the answer is on the product side because there's fewer moles there. And think back to like your ideal gas law. Each mole takes up about 20 liters-ish at room temperature and pressure. And that means the fewer moles we have, the smaller the volume that our system will have. And if I increase the pressure, it's going to favor the side with a smaller volume, right? If I squeeze in on something, it makes it more stable for it to go to the side where it's smaller. So high pressure favors, in this case, over here. And what's going to happen, because there's fewer moles of gas in the product side, it's going to increase the concentration of ammonia and drop hydrogen and nitrogen. And just like our temperature change, this is actually changing the equilibrium constant. Because we're changing which side is more stable, where the reactants or products are more stable. All right, let's quickly go through a few more examples. Here, we're dealing with a different reaction. Nitrogen plus oxygen goes to nitrogen monoxide. And it asks, what happens to the concentration of each reactant? Well, if more O2 is added, that means we're adding it to the reactant side. And that means our NO concentration is going to go up. We're adding that, so that's also going to go up. Meanwhile, our nitrogen will drop some, because some of that added oxygen will combine with the nitrogen, shifting it to the right side. So our equilibrium shifts to the right side. What about if N2 is removed? Well, that obviously means our N2 concentration is dropping. And actually, to balance that, some of our NO, our nitrogen monoxide, our product is going to split back apart and go back to the reactant side. And that means that our oxygen concentration is going to increase and our nitrogen monoxide concentration is going to drop. So again, we've shifted the reaction towards the side we've removed a product from. What if NO is added? Well, that obviously means our NO concentration goes up. And what that's going to do is cause more NOs to break apart and shift back to the opposite side. We've added something, so it shifts to the opposite side, and that's going to make our nitrogen concentration uh, go up, and same with our oxygen concentration. So if we add, say, like one mole of NO, a lot of that's going to split up into nitrogen and oxygen. So maybe I'll add one mole, and half of them will split up. And that's how I end up with actually more of each species, because I've added chemical product to the reaction. What about if the system of the pressure is increased? Well, let's count up our gas moles, because remember that our higher pressures favor the side with fewer gas moles. Well, here I have one and one, so just two moles of gas. And here I also have two moles of gas. So which side's favored? Well, it's a tie. So actually, it doesn't matter what the pressure of the system is, the equilibrium will stay the same. So this actually brings about no change. All right, last example. If the system of the temperature, if the temperature of the system is increased. Well, this turns out to be an endothermic reaction. We can tell that because our enthalpy is positive. And so since our enthalpy is positive, that means we can think about heat as a reactant. So remember, for endothermic reactions, heat is a reactant. We need heat to get it to go forward. For exothermic reactions, heat is a product. We get out heat when we run the reaction. So now if I increase heat while I'm adding to the left side, it's going to shift to the equilibrium to the right side. So that means that my nitrogen concentration is going to drop, my oxygen concentration is going to drop, and my nitrogen monoxide concentration is going to increase. So this is Le Chatelier's principle. It's basically just a way to think through how the concentration and equilibrium is shifted when we change things to the system. The three changes we talked about are concentration of a reactant, we can increase it or decrease it, temperature, we can increase it or decrease it, and changes in pressure, we can increase it or decrease it. So thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. If you have any questions about Le Chatelier's principle, ask it below.